Welcome to today's First Minister's Questions Review from Three Men and a Blog. This week we're short of Mr. Uh, Attridge, who is um, vacationing in Cuba. In fact, he's probably recovering from a severe hangover, having celebrated May Day in Havana yesterday. <laughs> Lucky him. Lucky him, I. Meanwhile, we've got Alex Grant, Norris Stewart and myself, Stuart Lockhead. And we've watched First Minister's Questions. Um, it was suggested before we went on air that there might be a three-pronged attack by the three opposition parties. And it, as it turned out, there was, on currency and pensions. Shall we start with, uh, start with Norrie today? What did you think? Well, first of all, congratulations to Alex, who got it spot on. Um, very impressed with Joanne today, actually. I don't know if she's got a new speechwriter or she's now writing her own, but I thought she was very effective, um, as did her bank ventures, who were acting like a bunch of school laddies who'd all just been given free chocolate and coke. Uh, <laughs> what kind? Was that a coke? Well, they were kind of well over the top when they're laughing and interrupting and heckling. They were. But there you are. Pre presiding officer had to tell them to shut up, up on two occasions, three occasions. But yes, I thought she used humour very well, very sarky, got her points across. Um, Alex was also having a lot of problems with his folder, wrong page, and there seemed to be a wind coming from somewhere blowing his pages about. He looked a bit flustered. Mm -hmm. I think maybe we ended up with a draw. Yeah. Um, but I do think Joanne did very well today. Um, Ruth, well, hiding to nothing, as usual, went with currencies and pensions, um, gave Alex the open door to come in and say, well, actually, we're in a better position financially to support the... Uh, well, you mean Scotland, pension. is it, compared to the rest yes. of the UK? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, to support so pensions. To support pensions and pointed out that if it hadn't been for the grab that uh, Brown made as Chancellor... In 1997, pension, yes, yeah. the pension raid. We yeah. wouldn't be in the problem we're in. And that was actually in reply to Ken McIntosh. Yeah. Which came to work towards the end. It was yeah. interesting, yeah. That, yeah. Uh, yeah. but that would have already been... Very published. disappointed in Willie Rennie. He's obviously seen a psychiatrist and getting over his pedo fantasies. Didn't mention the two-year-olds. Two two-year-olds didn't mention two-year-olds. Very old disappointed. Well, yeah, that's true. He went with currency as well. So yeah. it was very boring. He went with Mrs Thatcher. Which was quite good, yes. Yeah, it's good we for him. You turn. basically asked Ale Alex Salmon if he would like to be Mrs Thatcher yeah. and do a U-turn on currency. Salmon told him to bugger off. Um, he said something about wobbling. Yes, wobbling. Yeah. Turning or wobbling or even cartwheeling, as he said. Indeed. I had no idea what that was about, but Salmon threw it back at him big time. Pointed out that the 2010 Liberal Manifesto continued the support of joining the Euro. Yeah. So essentially, Salmon did away with the Conservatives and Liberals. Um, but I would say it was a draw between him and Joanne. I thought Joanne did very well. What do you think, then, Alex? Uh, I would agree with that. Um, oh, come I on, thought, disagree. No, no, I may disagree with some uh, points, uh, individual points, but I, I, I agree with Nori that uh, that, as far as I'm concerned, was was her best performance. However, one has to say, as maybe we've discussed before, she was given a relative open goal to shoot at. Uh, as we discussed before the before first minister's question started, um, they've had a they've had a difficult week. Um, Salmon did reply on a number of accounts in the way that I think he needs he and the yes campaign need to build on, um, which is why do people keep saying what are you going to do about pensions or what are you going to do about the currency when actually we own. The pension, the, I mean, I know a bit about the uh, pension protection fund because my pension fund is in it um, because my company got sold, etc., etc. I won't bore you with the detail, but I know a bit about it. And the pension protection fund is a British institution. And the suggestion that because we became independent, you would not resolve your share of that, I, I don't know what Scottish pensioners as a percentage of the population are involved in the... The number pension. was 16,000 that was mentioned. I know that, but what... It doesn't was, sound like very many, does it? <laughs> it, it doesn't, but uh, 
you know, however, however many people are currently protected, taking that one example, the pension, uh, the pension protection fund, how many Scots are involved in that? I can't believe for any reason that it's any more than a pro rata share of the population. And hence, when you start talking about assets and liabilities, it would get divided up appropriately. But we know, as ever, it is very easy for the opposition to say, I can find enough people to tell you why this is too difficult. Um, so uh, I think Alex Salmond did attack a number of things and Norris referred to them like, you know, don't talk to me about pensions because Gordon Brown's the one who's caused this deficit, which is literally true because he, he changed the tax allowances on pensions in 97, which caused the deficit and, okay, the meltdown of the stock market, etc., has exacerbated I that. I think he had a lot to do with that as well, didn't he, Gordon Brown? Oh, he did, he did. But, you know, it's, it's easy. It's relatively easy for them to, to, to throw rocks um, and because Alex Salmond, of course, wrote the famous letter to our mate Goodwin, they use it as though he's the only person who ever supported Goodwin and it's all his fault. That, that drives me not, And he worked for so, IBS, so that's apparently was a terrible drive, thing. This I know, darling like, thing drives me nuts. I know, but it was like... Darling gets Fred Goodwin a knighthood. Yeah, yeah. He has him as an advisor. Yeah, yeah. But Alex you, Salmond writes him a letter. But you've got, you've got to say that though, and I, I, you know, there are there are times during first minister's questions and during the during the week when, you know, you have to reply to, um, you know, fast rebuttal. I, you know, the the issue for me was, uh, but the problem that the the uh, SNP and the Yes campaign have, um, and that's one of the things as well. I remember he needs to say, well. Yes, we might be different from the Yes campaign because the Yes campaign isn't the SNP. Is that a surprise to well, you? Keep saying no, it, let's and I don't think he emphasised no, that. Let's be, let's, be, let's be clear about that. There was very little made of that apparent split between what the chair of the Yes campaign is saying and what, and what the SNP are saying. There was an attack on that, but well, one, it wasn't the, developed. No, it wasn't developed. There was one of a no, it, it wasn't developed, but there was one of a number of attacks on. It, it, you, you, the, the essential thesis and continuing thesis of what Lamont says is you're not to be trusted. You keep saying it's all simple, you're not to be trusted. Here's a number of reasons. There's a sound bite for tomorrow. No, and, and it's an easy target. Where he was good in responding was to, was to start building on, and he needs to emphasize this further. Look, we, we are in a stronger position with less liabilities as a nation than the rest of the UK, so being independent cannot possibly be a negative. And the issues in relation to currency and uh, pensions and defence and everything else, it's, we can afford it better than we can if we stay in the, in the United Kingdom. And one of the problems he has, of course, is it's never good for our First Minister of Scotland, although he's not the, he's not the Prime Minister or the Chancellor of the Exchequer, um, to talk down the economy. But it might, I think he might have to get to the stage where he starts talking down the UK economy quite hard because... If you know, if people are led to believe that that an independent Scotland is going to be in a worse situation than it is being part of the union, he needs to disabuse people of that because because uh, all they will do is say you need to be fear and don't trust this guy. Now I think I think the research actually says he's still more trusted than any other senior oh, politician certainly. in the UK. Well, well, let's let's move on. To, let's get so, sorry, no? Well, I mean, my my point about the trust is the point he made. I mean, he was very gentle in that. I mean, he, he probably should have come back with, you've got some problem with the electorate in Scotland. Yeah, yeah. They don't even recognise it. Never mind trust I that. mean, they don't know who you are. Yeah, correct. They know who I am, and they regularly, in every poll, say they trust the government. Yeah. The SNP government yeah. more than any other. More than any other party. Right. What about Ruth and Willie, then, Alex? Um, uh, well, I've... <laughs> Ruth did what she classically does. She had a go, but but he could easily turn that back 180 degrees and have a go back at her. When they, whenever the Tories try to lecture you on you're not doing enough, he just turns around and says, "Are you joking? Because you know you you wouldn't do anything." 
So, out of the way, Willie at least moved on, as Nori said, from the two-year-olds. And, and, and interestingly enough, somebody's obviously given him a bit of advice to say, well, let's try and make him sound like Mrs. Thatcher. Or maybe, I'm, I wasn't too sure at the end of the day, because he said a you for you turning like Mrs. Thatcher wasn't. So I couldn't, I got a bit confused. Well, the Island that. Lady was mentioned as well. Uh, no, absolutely. But, you know, it was, are you going to be as tough as Mrs. Thatcher, or are you about to U-turn because you've got different opinions? However, what he did was give him the perfect... Who, U-turn, do you seriously want to talk about U-turns? Because you're an expert in the subject, piss off, wallop. <laughs> We're talking about, uh, we well, actually didn't mention student f uh, tuition fees, I'm surprised they didn't mention that. Well, what is it about opposition parties and quoting Thatcher? Good question. The Tories don't do it, why does everybody else feel well, like it? Anyway, let's look at it, we, had, we definitely, Alex know. definitely won the pool because it was a 1-2-3 on the currency. Yeah. yeah. Plus a little side angle well, on the one, pension. Two, three, miss a couple. It was pretty predictable given for the last two weeks from my point of view uh, the SNP led by Mr. Salmond had been digging himself into holes. It was, it was, uh, we don't agree on that, I realise that, but it, um, it has to be said um, that Salmond was in a hole, he's still digging and it was pretty obvious they were going to attack him on that and that to some extent to me, explains Joanne's confidence today. Not necessarily a better speech writer. Agreed. She knows that for the last 10 days, yeah. the mainstream press have been bang, bang, yeah, banging yeah, on. Yeah. So if she goes with it, she's confident. Yeah. So she did do very well. I mean, I have to agree with you guys that she had, she had possibly her best, her best day. Willie, he didn't make any mileage at all. It was the ghost of Willie Rennie that turned up. <laughs> I don't know why they... Is it, well, is it BBC Scotland show that keep running with that? Yeah. The ghost of Willie Rennie. Might frighten you. Somebody, I think it was Pete Wishart, was talking on. Um, he's an SNP MP. He was talking about his moved into this house not too long ago, and the last person that lived there said he'd run into him in the street and said, "Have you found? Have you run into the ghost yet?" So I did wonder if it was a ghost of Willie Rennie. It was, it was, it was haunting Pete Wishart. Um, Ruth, something happened just before Ruth got to speak, and that was a. I wish I'd... I think I think he lost some of his papers. Salmon. Oh, right. I think well, that again. That yeah, seemed to be thoroughly enjoying the fact his papers were moving. Okay. Well, look. Um, the other thing I think the point has to be made that uh, we had both um, the internet feed and BBC Scotland's television feed running in, in the room, and the BBC production on their BBC Scotland television was appalling. First of all, they were late going to the yeah. chamber. They missed the beginning of the first minister's questions. And they left early. And on top of that, there was some Wally who kept inter interrupting with stupid voiceovers, right? And the uh, totally random, pointless voiceovers. Um, in the end, we watched we watched the last five minutes of uh, First Minister's questions on the internet because the BBC left so early. Well, and people won't know Murdo Fraser, Fraser had a question. Exactly. You know, absolutely appalling. But BBC. Scored, scored nothing out of 10 for today's production. Yeah, yeah. Um, who else spoke? Ken McIntosh. Sandra White, who's the tiny wee woman that has to stand on a box at SNP conference. She spoke at... Um, Very powerful. She, she did. She spoke at... the at, conference. Did yeah, she but, spoke at um, George Square a couple of weeks ago when Alex and I went yeah, to the... Good speech. Trident. Stop Trident rally. Trident. She was very good. Yeah, she was. You're right, she needs a box, but that's got nothing in that. That's she uh, has she spoke, spoke about the proceeds, uh, proceeds of crime. crime. Yeah. Labour, Labour have been banging on about that this week. Oh, they're trying to say that basically it's costing a fortune to, to manage crime, crime, but you're getting thrones back. Which, was, which is what well, they're trying to say again today. Well, Labour introduced the policy. Yeah. But they're, they're saying you're not But it was the enough. SNP that introduced the policy where the money went to communities. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think that's I right. Think that's a because there was a stussy on Newsnight about that. They were both looking for the, the kudos for the fact it was working, even though Labour were criticising the fact it wasn't working as well as it should be. Uh, well, Labour are basically saying the, the relationship between the money regained from the proceeds of crime bears nothing in relation to the actual proceeds, and you're spending a lot of money to chase it, so you might be actually giving this money back to the community. I think they said eight million. And Alex Summers is the last one. I would. I'm sorry. I would want a, a, an international comparative study to even discuss such. No, thing. I agree. Well, do you know what, what's interesting about it? I mean, one of one of the benefits it looks like of the uh, single um, Scottish police force 
they've opened, is it in Mogai? They've opened a, a, a unit there that is police, tax, and the uh, Crown Prosecution, right. essentially, right. who are working together on this one. Right. Serious organised crime. Well, it, it's, it's, it seems to be a theme with the SNP about this joined up writing because uh, their big policy in, in the National Health Service is that social service, national health service, it's GPs true. all work together. But I think, I know it's the Labour Party are starting to go down that route in England. Mm -hmm. I had somebody saying that in the last couple of Well, look, weeks. Claire, let's stick to this today. There was one thing I was noticed. We discussed a number of possibilities that might come up in first person's mm -hmm. question before it started. And one of the ones was possibility was satire. Given that you're a, a cartoonist, Nori, and uh, we did discuss satire in, in quite some depth because we had a meeting before we started broadcasting and discussing various aspects of what we might do and where we might go with uh, Three Men in a Blog. And satire, well, it's been in the Twitter sphere, social networking for the last couple of days. We seem to have had a, a repeat of the Scotsman. The Scotsman has form on building a, a straw, straw man out of nothing, like they did with Alistair Gray's thing about colonists and settlers, yeah. they built a huge fuss out of, out of that. This week they built a huge fuss out about Susan Calman being given death threats. Who is the granddaughter of Calman of the Calman Report, incidentally? I thought he was, she was the daughter. daughter. Is he the she's daughter? A, she's the daughter, yeah. Oh, sorry, I thought ah, she's that. <laughs> 30 something, so she's the daughter. Yeah, and she's a lawyer too, and she's well educated and knows her stuff. But anyway, they, they, it was a classic case of Scotsman building up this false, this faux outrage, typical tabloid nonsense. It's like the news of the world or the sun. Shocking, or the Daily Mail, shocking. They need to wonder they didn't put that in front of everything. So, um, well, their headline was death, death, death threat. Yeah, 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 right. Well, if there's one person she could get, Susan Calvin can get advice from about death threats, that would be Alex Salmond. Just <laughs> Google Alex Salmond and you'll find out how many death threats he gets a day. And he is, and they, a lot, some of the threats he gets and from elected politicians, bear in mind. What, what interested Sorry. me about Newsnight last night, and it was, it was touched on, I can't remember the comedian's name, it was a guy who was in the studio, yeah. was, oh, there's a dearth, says Brewer, of uh, satire. Scottish satire. Um, Vis-a-vis -vis the, the independence no, 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 debate, etc. Your cartoons, well, right? Well, actually, there isn't a dearth. What there is a dearth of is satire against the Yes campaign. Now there's a reason for that. Satire is aimed at the establishment, mm -hmm. and the No campaign, whether they like it or not, are the establishment. Are the establishment. The second thing is there is no BBC producer going to put on anything that goes against the No campaign. Correct. So you're never going to see satire of any standard mm -hmm. on the BBC because it's a state broadcaster. And if you look at what's happening online. BBC Scotland Shire, well I do my cartoons. Paul Kavanagh in uh, National Scotland. National, National Collective. Collective. Um, they all do bits and bobs. Scotland Shire is entirely satire. But it's all there. If they were that desperate to see it, all they have to up. do is drop them an email. Mm -hmm. But they're not going to do it. Because satire is only satire when it's pointed away from you. Mm. When it's pointed at you, it's nasty. <laughs> and that's a fact of life. Well, let me see. Who else did I think? What the did Willie? I thought he was a ghost. The, the real Willie or any didn't turn up. Um, <laughs> Ruth Davidson. I thought she had a poor performance. She, I mean, she's a, bear in mind, she's a professional television presenter. Her performance was very, very poor. All three of the leaders, oh, sorry, all four of the leaders, they covered the death of three Scottish-based soldiers in Afghanistan this week very well, I think, very sympathetically. And uh, the, the Parliament always does come together uh, at times like that. But you, if you were watching it on the BBC, folks, you'll have missed Joanne's input, which was very good. Yeah, thank you. Sweet again. Right, well, let's try running through the scores. We'll give Alex a chance to start the scoring this week. Uh, OK, well, I give the speaker two. I'll start there because I thought it was a bit of a ramy to be honest. Yeah, it was a bit. Yeah, Phil, if he was here, would have given it even less. But anyway, I I'll give it to give Willie Rennie to Ruth Davidson four, and uh, I thought jo Joanne was as good as Alex. Um, 
uh, in some respects, because as you've alluded to, because of the subject, she she was she was very good at the subject, but I, I don't think she was any better than Alex. But having said that, I don't think he was any better than her, so I give them both seven. Well, seven each, okay. Yeah. Um, Presiding okay. officer, too much of a stushy. Give her three. Willie, I'm really disappointed in him. mention two year old. So I'm only going to give him a two. Ruth, well, yeah, the pension thing, I thought she got got her point over, yeah. but hiding to nothing. I'll give her a four as well. Mm. I'm going to give Joanne eight, and I'm going to give Alex seven, because yeah. thinking about it, I can remember more of what she said mm -hmm. than of what he said. I thought she was very effective today. Um, she got in some nice jibes, you know, Alex forgetting that he'd worked for RBS, things like that. Mm. If she was playing that off the cuff, she wants to throw away her script no. now. No, she wasn't. Um, well, she certainly she, had, a, she was, had a better script than... Much more confident. Um, yeah, but I don't think she was playing off the cuff. She's not that good. I don't well, know. her comfort zone is expanding. Let me put it this way. Her, she has this glass ceiling that she's stuck under because she can never be that good. But on the other hand, it was as if... There was something just pushing the glass ceiling a wee bit. But I think, as you oh, said, no. it, it was the nature of the subject. It was she. She had lots of ammunition. Oh yeah, the I mean, that had been there all week. So she just, she reused the the ammunition. Well, it's, it's the second week of it. Let's be honest. It's it not did, just been yeah. running this well, week. Well, I I thought she did well today. And, um, so what did you give her? I gave her her, her an, an eight and yeah. Sam and a seven. All right. Well, I'll start with Joanne because I thought she was at, at her best, and I think I've given her an eight in the past, so I have to give her an eight this time. I also, strangely enough, agree with you on Salmon that he was not at his best and was he dropping his folder? Did he keep losing his place? Uh, he, he's... After all, I saw him, I have to say, I saw him give a terrible interview to Jon Snow on Channel 4 News earlier this week. And it was a car crash and I couldn't believe it. This is the master of interviews, the master of politician, the politician of the year of the UK last year and the yeah, year before. Yeah. Uh, so on that basis, I have to say, I'm going to, you know, I think he was only a six for me this week. Um, on Willie Rennie, he didn't really turn up, it was only his ghost, so he's got to have a minus two. <laughs> <laughs> so he didn't show up. Ruth, ah, now see Ruth again, Ruth's got to measure Ruth's performance on the fact that she's a professional performer and the, the fact that she managed to get a thing in about pensions that you're right, made a wee bit of a mark, I'll give her one. Presiding officer, well, given that there was an awful lot shouting, to be honest, I thought the worst offender was uh, Russell, the, was mm. the cabinet minister Russell. He kept bellowing away, and, you know, and it, was, it was hard to tell whether there was a voiceover from the BBC production department or somebody sitting right beside Sam. And well, this has happened before. Yeah, the microphones seem to be sometimes a bit iffy, don't they? This has happened before with um, what's her name, the, the deputy first minister. Nicola. Nicola. Speaking when Salmon was speaking, and you can pick you her up. Pay her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I mean, she, she, she is sat right next to him, of course, but mm -hmm. it did seem to be picking people up from further away. So, well, um, that's possibly somebody whoever's doing the techie side, so perhaps it's not um, presiding officer's problem. But I'll, I have to say, she did. Sorry, we noticed the fact that it was noisy. There wasn't a lot of desk banging, but there was not a lot of shouting and, and full laughter going on, so I'll give her two. Um, I wanted to give the BBC something. Well, let's just repeat the BBC production kick department where they need a good kick. Five. It was appalling. It was, it was pathetic. And um, they're not doing the people of Scotland a, a service. The Democracy Alive people, which is almost entirely produced from within Holyrood, I'm, I'm pretty certain, but from their department, was fine. But the BBC Scotland production, no. Nah. Yeah, but you need to give them 10 because that made their objectives. They're not there to do the people of Scotland a service. <laughs> Could be right there. Well, thank you guys for another entertaining first minister's you know, questions. Do you know what the scores? Oh, yes, sorry. Yeah, of course I do. Because this is important this week. Right. BBC right. have got minus 10. Right. Out of a possible minus 10. <laughs> um, I'll start at the bottom. Willie at 2, not really surprised. Followed by the presiding officer who got a 7, which I'm a bit surprised at. I think that's a bit high. She didn't mm -hmm. control it well. Ruth got a 9. Mm -hmm. Alex got 20, mm -hmm. 
and Joanne got 23. Yeah. Yeah. She wasn't in top form. Probably the first win ever for Joanne. I think so, yeah. I think she's had mm -hmm. one before. But it was again, it's rather, rather than her winning it, it was Salmon wasn't very good. Salmon mm -hmm. lost it. That's it. And he wasn't, he wasn't on top four. And he, he should have been better prepared than that because no, he's been digging that hole for about 10 days now. Stuart, I think we have to say that's her best performance. And Alec, on an average day, probably would have drawn with her. So he needs to up his game. Yeah. And we need to stop giving her advice because she's obviously taking it. Oh gosh, you must watch us <laughs> our review and go <laughs> off and then dish, and brush up in it. I doubt it somehow. Well, thank you guys and uh, thanks for watching and listening. And uh, tune in next week. Goodbye.